All right, so first off, thanks for coming here, Nathan. You want to start off and tell us uh, about where you went and how your experience was. Sure. Um, so I went to Tilburg University, um, and it was an awesome experience. Uh, I chose Tilburg for, for a couple of reasons, um, mainly because um, it's like in the Netherlands, and uh, my dad was originally from the Netherlands, so I kind of wanted to reconnect with my culture, if you will. Um, but also, I had a friend, uh, Julia Ingold, who went, and she had a really, really good time there. Uh, so I just kind of wanted to experience what it was like. Um, and it was also like really centrally located in Europe, so mm -hmm. I thought it would be an awesome chance to travel around a bit and check out local countries that cool, are nearby. Cool. So yeah. um, a lot of times when people go to different countries, they experience um, culture shock and um, language barriers. So did you have any problem with that when you went over? Um, surprisingly, I, I didn't have as many problems with that as I thought I would. Um, I actually kind of fit right in, I felt, when I arrived, which was cool. It helped that Tilburg University has a huge international student base. Um, so there were students from Canada, Australia, um, the States. Um, so it really made me feel a lot more at home. Um, and they're really, really friendly and warm people. So they're really good with welcoming them into their culture um, and kind of introducing me to the you know, the typical, th typical things that a Dutch student would do. Um, so it, it was pretty easy. Um, the biggest adjustment was probably all the biking. Like the very oh, first thing you do yeah. when you get there is you get your bike and you don't walk anywhere, you don't drive anywhere, you bike everywhere, even if it's like a 40 minute bike ride or whatever, that's yeah. like pretty normal. So that was a bit of an adjustment. I mm -hmm. was really sore my first couple of days. My legs were so sore. Um, but that was the biggest one. Oh well, yeah, you adjust, so. Um, okay, so. Universities, they typically have orientation programs, so what kind of things did you do the first week to kind of make new friends, uh, learn what's on the campus, things like that? Well, um, beforehand I had to pre-register for their orientation week, which was called Top Week. Mm -hmm. I believe it was another like 70 euro or something on top of it, but definitely well worth it. Um, they had a week full of activities planned. and. From my experience here at Waterloo, I expected a mix of academic activities, social activities, you know, getting to know the town. Mm -hmm. And there was, there was some information um, about, about Tilburg, the town, and about the university, but it was, I'd say, probably 95% social, uh, which was really fun and a great way to meet new people. Uh, so they start by dividing us into these mentor groups of about 12 or 13 groups, each with, you know, 20 to 30 uh, students from around the world. Mm -hmm. So no, like, you know, predominantly like Dutch people in one group. It's all an even mixture of all kinds of different cultures. Uh, so that was really, really cool. Um, and then we just have different, um, different kind of typical Dutch social events. Um, so there was, uh, uh, there was a concert in a park, uh, Steve Aoki, who's a pretty big nice. name for uh, electronic dance music. They put on a free concert with him headlining. So that was very cool. Um, there was a, kind of like a mini carnival in the park one of the days, um, and then of course, probably the, the most famous typical um, Dutch student event was the Beer Cantus. Um, so that's basically a drinking event. You start right in the midday, and um, by, the end of, by the end of the next three hours, everyone's on the tables just oh. singing and drinking and throwing their beers everywhere. It's, it was fun. a great time, yeah. All right, so do you still keep in contact with any of the friends you made over there, or? Yeah, definitely. Um, so where I lived uh, was, on Professor Ver Verbanaland was the street, but because nobody could say that, we just called okay. it Verbs. Yeah. Um, there was five apartment buildings, and two of them were international students only. Um, so I lived with 17 other international students, and we all shared one kitchen, two bathrooms. Oh. So we ended up getting very, very close, especially the people we lived with in our floor. Um, so I made really good friends with an Australian guy, a couple of Irish girls, mm -hmm. um, some Danish uh, people. And um, I still talk with them pretty much every day. So All right, nice. Yeah. All right. So um, transitioning to the academics portion. So, what courses did you take? Which ones did you like? Which ones didn't you like so much? And how did it compare to uh, Waterloo? All right. So um, when I arrived there, uh, I had initially signed up for five courses. Um, when I got into the kind of the academic part after the orientation week, um, and I looked at which courses that I had actually re received that I was in. Um, they were not all the same courses I signed up for. So I guess they kind of moved to, you know, if some courses were filled, they just moved me into another course. Mm -hmm. But I had no idea. So at first I was like, okay, I now have to go and change all of my courses again. 
And uh, it didn't end up being too bad because, um, for one, it was almost impossible to change any of my courses. So I just had to accept mm -hmm. what was where it, fate. accept my fate <laughs> exactly. Um, but it did require going. You know, you have to talk with the professor, then you have to talk with this administrative person, and then your exchange coordinator, and uh, just so many steps. It's just like take a ticket here, take a ticket here, book an appointment there, fill yeah. out this form. <laughs> Um, so that was a big, a big change for me. Uh, but once I got into my courses, um, I, I found them pretty good. Um, I would say the biggest thing is there's a lot of responsibility on you to do well. So they don't, you know, remind you about things that are upcoming. They don't say, hey, look, this is what you have to read. At the beginning of the course, they say, look, we're going to be covering chapters, you know, 1 through 30 in this textbook. Come to all the lectures for the information, and it's 100% final. So all my courses were actually 100% finals. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that was a big adjustment because I'm used to being, you know, the, your profs kind of keep at you for, you know, this assignment's due next week. We have a midterm two weeks after that, you know, little bite-sized chunks, I guess. Yeah. Um, but this was like, if you wanted to, you know, do other things instead of going to class, like maybe travel, go on a trip or something, mm -hmm. it's like, well, I don't have any midterms or anything coming up. So, yeah. you know, no reason why, why not to. But it can be a big issue when, um, when it comes to final exam seasons because yeah. then it's a lot more stressful. Okay, so you talked a little bit about your professors, but what about, well, professors as well, but and the student advisors there, were they helpful? Were there lots of, um, like, their offices, like, you go visit them and ask questions? Were they available, that sort of thing? Yeah, uh, good question. Um, it was a bit of a mixed bag in that um, all the advisors, all the professors were incredibly warm and friendly and, you know, really, really interested in helping you. But the um, administrative system that was in place there was a, a bit of a different story. At least oh. I thought it was. But it was because I wasn't used to it. And after a while, I did get used to it. But um, like I said, it's, there's literally machines everywhere at all the offices for taking a ticket. And you, you have to punch in why exactly you're seeing them. You take a ticket. Sometimes you can't see them the same day. Oftentimes, there's forms you have to fill out before you can even see anybody. So that was, that was a big change. But what was really, really nice is um, and this might not seem like a big deal, but mm -hmm. for an international student with English is my, is my first language, it was a huge deal, is everyone has wonderful English there. Okay. Um, so the, the professors and the administration, whatever, it's really, really easy to communicate with them. All right, excellent. So um, you already mentioned a little bit about um, how you had 17 people, one kitchen. Um, so can you expand upon like your living conditions and also mention uh, things like living costs and your housing costs? So how were they compared to Waterloo and yeah, go ahead. <laughs> sure, sounds good. Um, so, like I said, I lived in Verbs with a lot of international students um, and Dutch students as well. And yeah, 17 people on the floor, one kitchen, yeah. which had no freezer, no actual fridge, just a couple oh, no. of mini fridges, uh, you know, two sinks. So, at all times, there was people in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And at first, it was it was a bit of a struggle because if I wanted to cook, like there was just no room, I couldn't cook. I had to like sit and wait for someone else to finish. Yeah. But it really brought about this interesting social dynamic because there's all these people sitting around waiting to use stuff in the kitchen. Um, so we actually just spent a lot more time together than we would have otherwise. So in that regards, I got really, really close with the people that I lived with. Mm -hmm. And it was something, having not lived in residence here at Waterloo, is something I couldn't really compare it to anything else. Right. But it was a, a wonderful experience. Um, housing costs there were sub they're subsidized by the government. Oh. So what would normally be 550 euro per month was 350 euro per month. Oh, nice. um, yeah, and that's you know no taxes or anything on top of that. That's all included, um, which was phenomenal value. We had a cleaning service there, uh, and they did a really good job. Came in three days a week to clean everything up, and there was often quite a big mess. So definitely got our money's worth yes. out of that. Um, and the room was, was a massive room with two really big windows. Uh, I could not have asked for a nicer living situation. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think it was the nicest living situation I've had since I've started university. Oh, really? So I, I think I got quite lucky that way. Um, but for prospective students looking to go to Tilburg, make sure you get in the housing early because it usually books up within the first hour of becoming available. So you have oh, to yeah. really get on it. Otherwise, yeah. you have to live in town <laughs> and quick. you have to bike to school. Yeah. All right. So. Um, how much would it cost, say, to go for a meal, and where are also some foods you tried, uh, uh, Dutch cuisine? <laughs> Dutch cuisine isn't <laughs> something that, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if cuisine's the right word, yeah. but they do have, there's all these like Dutch little snacks, um, like Ole Bolin is oh, yes, like a big yeah. thing, especially around Christmas. Um, and then the frit met mayo, fries with mayonnaise is huge. I guess equivalent to our poutine would be French fries with, uh, 
with mayonnaise there. Um, so the cost of eating out is actually quite expensive. You're looking at probably 15 to 20 euros for a standard meal, mm -hmm. which you know, at $30 plus Canadian is, is really expensive. But that kind of contract uh, contrasts with, um, with going to the grocery store there because um, a lot of the shops are, it's very competitive, so prices are very, very cheap. So especially for dairy products, like a liter of milk was 80 cents, like oh, wow. ridiculously cheap. Like chocolate bar was 39 cents. Um, chocolate milk, which was kind of like a staple of my diet, was uh, always less than a euro for like a liter or two liters. Um, so overall, the food prices were significantly cheaper than, than in Canada. Good, good. So you mentioned earlier also that you traveled. So what kind of place did you, did you go and did you take weekend trips or did you go after you finished your semester? So just expand upon that. Yeah, sure. Um, so all the trips I did were weekend trips. Um, I was lucky enough that I didn't have classes on Fridays, so I had an extra long weekend for traveling and definitely made the most of it. So um, one of the first weekends I was there, I flew out to London to visit my sister who lives there and um, flights were very cheap. It was about 50 euro round trip. Okay. So um, a, a really nice thing about the Netherlands is you're just so centrally located to so many great places for visiting. And um, I flew out of Eindhoven, which is a, a pretty pretty big airport that's close to Tilburg University that allows you to catch all kinds of cheap flights with, uh, with Ryanair. So while I was there, I traveled to uh, London, Paris, Dublin, uh, Amsterdam, uh, Brussels, Bruges, Munich. Um, th those were the main places I went to. And it was all insanely affordable to get mm -hmm. to. Um, and just so many uh, contrasting cultures and really cool to travel around. Uh, one of the really cool things, if you figure out the train and bus system well, you can kind of combine the two and use them to your advantage. So from Tilburg to Brussels, it only costs nine euro if you get a bus and then a train. So once you start figuring out things like that, traveling becomes really, really cheap and, uh, and easy. So of all the places you visit, which one would you say was your favorite or most memorable? Uh, that's a really yeah. tough question. Yeah. Uh, it would have to be between two places. Uh, one was Paris. I'd never been to Paris before, and uh, my expectations were, I don't know, I've, I'd heard that maybe it wasn't the nicest city, but it's also, you know, it's very famous. But I loved Paris. Paris was, was amazing. Uh, and then probably my favorite town was Bruges in the north of Belgium. It's just an old medieval town. Um, most of the buildings are from the 1500s or earlier. There's canals everywhere. There's towel, towers and churches. And it's just such a, such a beautiful town. It, time felt kind of like it slowed down a little bit while I was there just because, yeah, it was a really good time. Cool. So if you could give um, one advice to anybody going on a trip anywhere or just to Tilburg, what would you... Uh, give them other than the courses you mentioned. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I would say definitely talk to someone who's done exchange before because it's hard to really know exactly what you're getting yourself into unless you do. Mm -hmm. I know for me, um, before I talked to my friend Julia who had, who had gone to Tilburg, um, I had heard all these great things about exchange. I obviously really, really wanted to go on exchange, but I was mm -hmm. also a little bit uh, scared and nervous, and it seemed like there was a lot of, um, you know, like barriers that were in place for going on exchange, like I was in co-op, so maybe I couldn't get it to work with my co-op, mm -hmm. or um, you know, there's all this paperwork to fill out, and I hate yeah, paperwork. Yeah, yeah. Um, but none of that should should stop you from doing it because it's something that I've never heard of anyone regretting it. I know I don't regret it, uh, even just for the people you meet. I think it's worthwhile. Um, so I'd say talk to someone who's done it before, and you'll probably be sold. All right, excellent. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us today, and uh, right, yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed your trip. Thanks a lot. Bye. <laughs>